basic tools do you need to do motorcycle maintenance? Now, if you're new to my channel, you will not know this, but I do lots of videos doing maintenance on motorcycles and I try and encourage people to do maintenance on their own motorcycles. Um, so this is my other half CBR, currently sorting out the suspension on that and it just so happens that my DRZ is also needing some more attention. The funny thing is I actually completely stripped and rebuilt this bike, even painted the frame, like literally stripped down to nothing and back up again. Only last year, or was it earlier this year? No, it was last year because of COVID. So just to put things in context, I completely rebuilt this bike, apart from the engine, that didn't need any attention. Uh, and I've also just recently done a series on my XJ6, where I partially stripped that down and did a lot of work to it. And because of that, I've had the question, which is okay, I think I finally got over the fear of doing my own maintenance. I've watched enough videos to think, I think I've got a clue. What tools am I gonna need to start with? Like, or if I'm a 125cc rider, you know, uh, I want to do maintenance of my own bike. What are the basic tools I'm going to need to do most jobs? Uh, and that's what this video is going to be. I've kind of done a video like this a few years ago. It never really got picked up by the algorithm or anything like that. I've also learned a lot since then. I've picked up new tools. I've learned new things. So this is an update to that. Okay, so let's start with you've got a 125 and you need the absolute basic tool set. Set of spanners. You're going to need a set of spanners. So I personally, uh, you can get whatever tools you want, but these are Halfords Advanced uh, Professional ones. I buy these when they're on offer. They come with a lifetime guarantee. Uh, you don't need to keep the receipt anymore, if any of my old viewers know about that. Um, two weeks after that video was made, they stopped asking for them because their name's stamped on it. But yeah, these come with a lifetime guarantee. I'm very happy with them. They're not very expensive. Buy them on offer. I think that set was about 20 quid, 25 quid on offer. Uh, it may have been even a cross off with something else, with some screwdrivers or something. So yeah, set of spanners. 19 is generally the largest one you're going to need. Um, beyond that, you might use sockets generally. But yeah, you will need a 19 most likely. Other common sizes are 14s, 12s. There are 13s as well. Not many 11s you find on bikes. Uh, 10s and 8s are common. 6s if you're going down to like um, bleed valves and things like that, depending on the bike. So they're moving on to sort of pliery type things. Needle nose pliers like these, very useful for when you need to do clips and pins and, and stuff like that with your front of bike. So I would say pick up a set of those quite early on and a normal set of pliers. Um, snips for when you do electrical work. If you're going to go into doing electrical work, it's good to have some proper cable snips. Uh, these are tin snips, you don't have to worry about those, that's for metal work. Another handy thing to have while we're, just before we move beyond spanners too much is adjustable spanners. These should be used in the right way and then you shouldn't damage any nuts with them, but they can be incredibly helpful if you don't have a size. Uh, you know, whether it's some random size that, you know, you, of course, all my stuff is metric, I should say this. I don't work in Imperial. We don't work in Imperial in the UK so much anymore. Well, we don't anymore, apart from, from some things. I've done a video talking about that. Uh, but everything I work on is metric, so I have metric tools. If you happen to come across something that's imperial and you don't have the right size for it, one of these can be very handy. The reason why I've got such a massively wide set is because it also uh, goes to 50mm, which allows me to take the caps off of my DRZ suspension. Uh, you should, you could use a proper tool for that, but using these the right way, I haven't done any damage to them. I'm very happy that works fine, whatever. There's a chain splitting tool, which um, yeah, you're going to need that eventually when you change, um, change your chain. Okay, so moving down, Allen's is another thing you're absolutely going to need. Uh, you can either get this sort, you can get T-handles. Sometimes the T-handles can get in places that these can't, and sometimes these can get in places T-handles can't. So having which ones you get is up to you. This set wasn't very expensive from Halfords. Um, and this set is a silver line set that's not bad, actually. And a subscriber of mine bought with, uh, these for me. However, what I will say is, and I do know this from someone who had a set of these, if you try and twist these handles too hard, like you really wrench on them, they have a habit of splitting. So as long as you use them in normal context, they're absolutely fine. And the advantage of the whoops, T handles is you can spin them so you can undo things quicker when it's loose. Uh, oh, I should have probably pointed this out. A hammer, a nice big hammer. Uh, here's a little tip. If you have to keep, if you've got a small hammer and you keep hitting it harder and harder, don't keep doing that, just get a larger hammer and hit it gently again. You want to build up the size of the hammer rather than how hard you hit it. Uh, it's a, something I've learned. But anyway, uh, this is, a, I think this is like a two pound hammer, something like that. This thing has, it, it's one hell of a multi-tool, let's just say that much. Uh, and that was a, like three pound something. This is a silver line one from Amazon. It's 
for three quid I cannot complain. I mean, it's a horrible casting and stuff, but it's strongly made. It's been staked in place, ground down. Then continuing on with the essentials, a set of screwdrivers like this, uh, you know, some flatheads and some Phillips. This again is a Halfords Professional set. Uh, this has generally got all the sizes you're going to need because you've got a reasonably big one, a medium sized one, a small one that's good for electricals. You've got a stubby for getting into you know, places where you can't reach because of fairings and things like that. And then you have three sizes of the Phillips and generally I find they cover all bases. So another little tip to mention, make sure that you use the right size screwdriver or the right size Allen key in the thing that you're doing, otherwise you'll make your life a nightmare. So continuing on with the essentials. Uh, a socket set. You're going to need a socket set. This again is a Halfords Advanced one, uh, which I'm very happy with. I haven't broken anything from this, but they would replace it should I do that. The ratchet is still working nicely, uh, although it's got quite a lot of backlash, and I wish it had smaller teeth, but it is what it is. Sizes that these come in is like 9 to 18, that's right, 9 to 20 in this box. That's going to cover most things, but then you do get some smaller stuff, uh, and because of the way that this set is, I needed to get a, an adapter, you know, to change it down a size. And I've got this set, which overlaps with this set. So this starts with 14 mil, and goes down a few more. Down to, uh, what's that, like 4 mil, yeah. So between these and these, that covers all the sockets I ever need, apart from a few extra large ones, which I buy individually. Now the way I do this is, to be honest, this list I'm giving you now is really kind of day one stuff. You're kind of in most jobs going to need all these things. Uh, but occasionally, if you go to doing things like having to take wheels and things off, you're going to need oversized, not oversized, but large sockets. Like this is a 22, I think that's for, can't remember what that one's for, but the, the 24 is definitely for the, um, the axle nut on my DRZ. And then there's a 30 or a 32, 30, which is for the front counter shaft nut or the front sprocket nut on the DR as well. You know, I don't use these in any other job, but so I wouldn't buy another set that goes completely beyond it. Uh, the black ones, by the way, these are impact sockets. The silver ones are just supposed to be used by hand. Impact being, you know, the da -da 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 gun, the air powered guns. Actually, I guess I need to explain where you use an impact before I talk about this. So impact drivers, impact wrenches, are used when you have a stuck nut or a bolt or something like that that's seized. If you try and undo it with a normal bar or with a socket, the, pl the pressure you apply to it kind of ramps up and then ramps down as you force on it and let go. And it can take the strain. But with an impact, it hits it round. So you give it a few good hits, it normally breaks whatever's seizing it up and then it'll undo nice and easy. So that's why you use impacts. But because of that, you can't use these types of sockets and impact guns because they're shattered because they're quite hard. The impact sockets, to my understanding, are a little bit softer, um, or at least they are made to be able to take the impacts and not shatter on you. Now, I'm not suggesting this is a basic kit thing, I'm just showing you for an example. So this is an impact wrench, which is an air-powered one. You know, the ones. That's for big stuff. Um, this is a little one that's used for small things. This is actually supposed to be a driver rather than an impact because of the type of spindle it has on it. But because it's underpowered, it's actually really good for small stuff undoing things. You don't really do stuff up with an impact. You can, let's not get into that. I'm talking to newbies here, people who know what they're talking about. Right, so this is a mechanical impact driver. And this thing will cost you about 15 pounds. In fact, one of my subscribers bought this for me a few years ago. Oh, and by the way, a lot of people don't know this. You can pull the head off and put any sized socket on there. Well, he's got the right dry but anyway the way that these work is that you would put it on a socket or something you put it in the right direction and then you hit it with a hammer here and it pushes down and in doing so it turns the end so you're not going to use this to undo stuff normally it's just when it's stuck a couple of good hits normally gets it loose then you switch over to a socket the amount of times that this would have saved my butt when I didn't have it means that for its and for its cheapness if you can't afford another type of impact driver, one of these is invaluable. It will really help you. If you're dealing with old stuff particularly. If it's all new stuff, it's not going to be that seized, hopefully. But as I say, remember, if you're going to use sockets with it, you're going to have to have impact sockets. And they can be bought cheaply and they come in kits like this. You can recognise impact sockets because they always tend to be black. That's not always true. Sometimes you get painted black sockets, but normally impact sockets are. They look like this. That's a relatively cheap set and they work fine. Again, silver line. It's not great, might not last forever, but it works. If you're a professional, well, you're not gonna be watching this video, or if you are, why? Um, 
but I hope you liked it. <laughs> uh, but if you're not using them that much, things like this can actually last you a while. I'm quite happy with these. So, obviously you also have an assortment of extensions that you can get which you'll need to reach down in places. The, that kit comes with a short one, this is a longer one I bought separately for a job. And of course you can join them together to make stupidly long ones. Um, this is a set of adapters that take, you know, from one size to another. You don't want to go too far with this, you know, like trying to have that size and then convert it up to that and then try and undo it because you're putting all the strain on the, the smallest part and they will just snap. It's not what they're for, but they are very handy. So as I say, everything so far I would call essential. These two are essential, but they're expensive and a lot of people don't want to go and buy them because they're like, oh, I don't need it. I can just use that, it'll be fine. Yeah, but when you're new to fixing bikes, you don't have what I call mechanical sympathy, which means you know what 80 Newton meters feels like. Uh, and you can do something up and you won't destroy it. You know the, the signs to know when things are going bad. Torque wrenches, stop that. You can dial them in to the recommended torque settings for your bike, whatever part you're doing, and it will click when you get to the right point. They look like this. This is a large one which is used for obviously larger sizes. This ranges from, because I had a problem, I was trying to find one that had a good range on it. This ranges from 30 to 210 Newton meters. Obviously, this is a cheaper one, it's a Draper, but I have to say, I think it's all right. Uh, I have a video explaining how you set a torque wrench uh, if you want to go down that route. I would highly advise you do. Um, this is the sort of size you're going to need for axle nuts and things like that. This smaller one is used for engine casings and smaller bolts. This one ranges from 5 up to 25. And engine casing bolts are around 9, spark plugs are around 12, um, larger, larger things would be around 30, 40, and then going down to your axles you're getting into like the you know, the 70s, 80s. And then when you come to something like a front sprocket, you could be up to nearly 100 or even slightly over. And for anyone who says, that's way too high, no, 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 Suzuki has the specifications, the updated specification for the DRZ, I believe, is 105 Newton meters. You also might want to pick up one of these, which is a two foot breaker bar. This is like a socket, but it doesn't have a ratchet head and you use it for undoing really tight stuff. Uh, it gives you that much extra leverage. You know, it works like any other one. You just shove that on the end. And there you go, swivels. That again will allow you to undo things that you will not be able to undo with your uh, socket or your ratchet. Or if you do put your ratchet, this is the thing, people also do this, they have a habit of putting a ratchet on something and then using a bar. The ratchet wasn't designed to be used beyond human strength. So putting that bar on it is gonna put massive pressure on the mechanism, it's gonna ruin it. So don't do that, these are cheap, get one of those. I think that pretty much covers you. Say you go and get a 125, you want to do basic maintenance, that will cover you for pretty much everything. There's a few extra bits and pieces you can get on top of that. Um, some files can be handy, but you don't really want to be filing stuff too much. Uh, some sandpaper, like some 240, some like 600, some 1000 and stuff can help you clean up bolts and things. A wire brush, that's another good handy thing to have. You're also going to need a few sundries, like some WD-40 to undo seized nuts. Um, this is used for many of the wrong jobs on motorcycles by people, but I'm not gonna get, gonna get into that one. But also people tell you you, can, you can't use it on things that you can. It's, it's really interesting, so as I say, I'm not getting into that debate. Brake and clutch cleaner or brake cleaner. This is basically a, it's pretty much just alcohol and a spray, and it's very good for cleaning up your brakes, getting oil off your discs. If, you, if you've done any work, like you know, you change your brake discs, you wanna clean them afterwards with this and get as much oil off as you possibly can. Uh, it's great for getting grease and grime out of things. Not too thick a grease because this just melts the surface and evaporates off very fast. Basic three in one oil can also be a good thing. And then there's things like copper grease. Looks like this. It's literally a grease full of copper particles. This is used for things like a, a bolt that's going to be in a hot area on the engine and you don't want it to seize. The copper grease will stop that happening. Don't use it on brake pads and stuff like that. Don't get it in near your brakes. This is used on things like axles. You want to grease your axles so they don't get stuck in the wheels. Not too much to mind, but you know, pins and stuff need a bit of grease to stop them seizing. Keeps the water and the, the uh, salt and all of the crud out. Something like that. If you're working on brakes uh, or replacing O-rings and things like that, red rubber grease is what you're going to need. Uh, this is safe with nitrile rubbers and uh, brake system rubber, rubber type materials. So that's another thing that if you're going to work on brakes, you will need because you will need to use that stuff and you don't want to use the wrong thing. 
this one is clear silicon grease. This can be used on O-rings and stuff like that, rubbers, because it doesn't affect the rubbers. Uh, but it's also good for putting on battery terminals to stop them uh, getting corrosion and stuff. It, you can use Vaseline and stuff, but this is kind of better. If you are working on suspension or O-rings and stuff, a pick set can be very helpful for getting things out of little tight spaces. And there's also a random amount of uh, extra Allen keys in here. And, oh look, the world's smallest Allen key. So cute. I also have an assortment of punches and chisels, which you can use if you when you have to, gosh, you don't want to be in a position that you'll be using a punch on things, but it happens. You can just use a piece of steel um, like this, which I made specifically for a job. This is just mild steel. Be warned, the end's gonna, you know, round over over time, whereas these are hardened and won't do that. Uh, another thing I forgot to mention, uh, this is the front axle from CBR. Lots of bikes, the front axle is like this, and you need a tool like this that goes in there, and then you can undo it. Uh, this is one of these spindle tools you can buy, and it's all stuck together like that, and you just stick a socket in, and it gives you four different sizes. However, I can't remember why, but for some reason this needed to be chopped in half. Uh, but you can still use it. I can't use that end because I know I had to modify it to make it fit, but that I put into a socket and then I can use it like that. And I think this one goes in this one, yeah. So I can use it like that because the 19 is the side I want. One of these, they're not very expensive, but if you're taking your front wheel off, you're going to need it. These are a very large Allen key <laughs> if you want to take your front uh, axle out. Have I forgotten anything? Um, oh, degreasing stuff off the bike. Say you are, now you're taking a chain guard off or something and it's absolutely caked in grease. The way I would say clean that is get some a stick or something or some like tongue depressor type things for scraping all that grease out and then use like a paintbrush, cheap ones, and white spirit. Oh, oh, not on the bike, remember, away from the bike, this is flammable. Uh, white spirit and it'll help, you can soak it in there and you can brush it off and it'll help degrease it. And it's cheap. You can also use paraffin. But I actually find that white spirit is better. Continuing on with the essentials if you want to do electrical work on a bike. Uh, you're going to need some solder, some cable of the right gauge. Don't be using the wrong gauge cables. It's important. The thickness of it denotes the power of the amperage it can take. Make sure you use the right sizes, because if you use the wrong size, set fire to your bike. Do it the right way. But yeah, solder, wires. I guess I should say it. Zip ties and duct tape are also essentials. Uh, in here, I've got a... Oh, God. Sorry, I'm trying to hold everything here. A simple soldering kit that works fine, um, had some problems with the tips on it, but it's a cheap one from eBay, but yeah. See here we've got some really thick gauge cable, that was for doing some um, high voltage work on the DR. If you're fixing things, the soldering iron is, and the soldering wires and connectors and heat shrink, you know, bullet connectors and heat shrink, that's all gonna be essential. You know, I've got boxes of heat shrink, boxes of connectors and stuff. This stuff isn't that expensive, you can pick it up. But the thing that is essential and you really should buy if you're on a motorcycle, because they get electrical issues and this makes your life a thousand times easier is a multimeter. Doesn't need to be super expensive, but a multimeter will save you a lot of hassle. Another thing I would call essential are stands for your motorcycle because you can use blocks of wood and things, yeah, but if it falls off of that, it's probably gonna cause more cost in damage than one of these costs. You get a few different types. You get rear stands like this that you can use on its own, so just the back wheels off the floor. And as you can see, the wheel spins. You also get front stands like this, which are for the front wheel. You should never use these alone. You should only use one of these after you've put the bike on the rear stand first. If you don't, it has a good chance of falling off, as I discovered, because I made a big mistake in the past <laughs> when I used one of these in a video uh, talking about stands. Woo, go me. Everyone learns. So yes, it's very important to note this. You cannot use a front stand unless you've already put the bike on a rear stand, which means if you buy one of these, you sure as hell better have a rear one first or buy both at the same time. They are universal and they can use them on different bikes, so they're quite good and they're not too expensive. I have an Amazon store that has some links to these ones because I quite like these ones. I can't talk for other ones. I've had some that were absolutely terrible. There's also this type, which is called a headstock stand, and that's because this is designed, whereas in the other one's designed to go on the wheels, obviously if you need to take the forks off, that's not going to work because there's no wheel. Uh, so the headstock stand goes up and actually goes into a hole in the bottom of here, which means that when it's on a rear stand as well, again, this is an example of a one that you really shouldn't use alone. Uh, this bike is absolutely solid. I can actually even turn well, I can't without moving things, but you can still turn the bars uh, with it on this stand. 
So that's those types of stands. And then there's another type called a paddock stand, which is this, which is basically a platform that lifts up and down. When you push on that, I'm not going to lift it up. There's no point in the moment. But that just sits underneath the bike. But obviously, bikes with underslung exhausts and bikes that basically aren't dirt bikes can't use that type of stand. Uh, supermotos, dirt bikes, enduros, adventure bikes to a point. Um, there might be the odd other bike out there, but generally this is off-road stuff. And this stand is brilliant because you put it in the middle, you put it up, and it lifts the bike off the ground, both wheels off the ground in one go. Uh, and then you take one wheel off, and then it falls backwards, and you have to shimmy it up again, and it will balance. And then you take the rear wheel off, and then it tips forwards, and you have to shimmy it back the other way. But you can completely strip a bike down to the engine and take the engine out of the frame on one of these stands. I've done it to this bike on that stand. If you're going to work on your brakes, and I would only advise people that feel like they've learned enough to truly know they're going to be okay working on their brakes, because this is the thing. Working on some stuff is not too risky. Some Working on some stuff could get you killed. Brakes is really important. You really should not be going to do work on brakes unless you know what you're doing. However, if you do, and you're just, you know, changing pads and bleeding your brakes, which is a fairly common and easy thing to do, uh, one tool I advise getting is some plastic hosing and a jam jar. Uh, or a reverse bleeding kit but as a basic cheap thing jam jar hole in it plastic hose with a hose clamp you put it over the end of the nipple if you don't know what i'm talking about you'll know in the future when you go to bleed brakes but it allows you to see the air bubbles coming out of the brake line see the fluid coming out collect the other fluid in the jar and then dispose of that don't reuse it it's quite possible i've forgotten some tools that you would consider essentials i've just you know i'm, I'm trying to do this off oh blowtorch blowtorch can't be tight if it's liquid. If I have forgotten any tools that you would consider essential, or you yourself consider them essential and I've not mentioned them, please say, I'd love to know. In the beginning I bought a few basics, like I've tried to explain to you here, and then each time I've needed a new one, I've just gone and grabbed one. And slowly, slowly, over time, I've increased my tool kit to something that I can completely strip bikes down, put them back together. I've, you know, chopped them up. <laughs> I've got grinders and uh, TIG welders and plasma cutters and another welder over there. The reason I have these welders and stuff is not for working on motorcycles. It's for a business that I, I guess, used to run rather than do now. It may It's on a hiatus. It may come back. I don't know at the moment. But anyway, beside the point. Um, yeah, you don't need stuff like that necessarily. Oh, 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 there is one other essential. I do hope people w watch all the way through. <laughs> That's it. They're watching the first place. Set of verniers. Um, when you're setting your chain tension, set of these really will help you. Uh, basically, they're precise measuring devices, but they're good for taking the distance on one side, locking it in place, going to the other side, and making sure it matches. Um, it's far more trustworthy than the witness marks you get on the on the swing arm. I've got videos on most of these things. I have hundreds of videos and all sorts of maintenance related stuff and. It will show you how and I'll show you what tools I use and why I use them. And I try to explain things with best best practice, but um, but also in a very simple way. Another thing actually is a vice. Now, there, you shouldn't be clamping stuff hard in a vice and stuff, but there are jobs that come along that require you to have something like this that can hold your work or hold the thing you're working on um, to do what you need to do. So not straight away, but getting a vice is worthwhile. Try and pick up an old one like this brute here. Um, if you buy one of the cheap Chinese ones for like 25 quid, it'll likely snap in half, like the one I did. This is continuing more into restoration than uh, normal maintenance, but this is also very useful. A wire brush uh, on a tool of some sort, on a drill, to help clean up nuts and bolts and get the rust off them. This isn't a particularly strong one. I mean... I'm not bleeding, you see. It's, this one's good for just cleaning rust off the things without ripping them to pieces too much. If you use something like this on an angle grinder, you will actually eat metal away, um, which can be good if that's what you need to do, but it also can be bad if you don't want to do that. So use the right brush for the right job. Even softer ones than this are available called, uh, they're called carting or carding, carding wheels. Um, but yeah, very handy. Little belt sander, also very helpful. Little grinding stone, also very helpful. I think I mentioned hacksaw at the beginning, but angle grinder or hacksaw. Some clamps can also be useful. And one last thing that I would say is essential if you're doing a motorcycle restoration is a rotary tool like this. This is a Dremel 4300 that Dremel sent me to do a review on. I have a review on it, blah, 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 blah. Uh, but any rotary tool that's good, um, invaluable for you know, grinding little things, cutting little things, cleaning stuff up that you can't get in with a bigger wire brush. This 
did a lot of work on the DR. Um, and to continue on from my sort of review from it, it's still going strong and it has no issues. Oh, sorry, I don't know if you can actually see there, the, uh, the actual tools over here, this is just an extension that allows me to work on stuff over here. Now I will say here, this is actually just a, a burn some plaster kit, but have some first aid stuff in your garage, or at least very, very close to it. My stuff's just inside the house, um, you know, bandages and stuff. You can get hurt, and if you need to stop bleeding, then you're going to need some stuff. Also, advised having saline or an eye, emergency eye wash or something like that, because you can get stuff in your eyes. Uh, if you're using rotary tools and stuff, for God's sake, use goggles. I have got metal fragments in my eyes and had to have them removed, which is a process where they... You, I'm not going to go into it here. I have videos talking about it from one of my journeys getting it done. Even though I was using safety glasses, I still got bits in my eyes. But imagine what would happen if I didn't. It would happen all the time. And trust me, you don't want it. It's nasty. Oh, and I guess also to that end, a respirator, depending on what you're working on, is also a good idea. That's not a respirator. It's a mask. That's not a respirator. But you know what I mean. As I say, injuries do happen in the workplace. I think we can stop there. That's, you know, the very basics through to some more advanced stuff. Most people aren't going to watch a video this length anyway, but I like to go into proper detail and mention what I can where I can to try and help people where I can because I had to learn by myself most of the time. Um, so I like to pa pass on the wisdoms that I have gained. If your ball is too big for your mouth, it was never your ball. Like the video, subscribe, help support this channel on Patreon, and I will catch you in the next one. Bye-bye.